risk making facts on the ground such that a two-state solution becomes unviable. And that, in turn, will do absolutely nothing, nothing, to safeguard the security of Israel itself and of Israeli citizens. And that is why I condemn the continued illegal settlement activity in the strongest possible terms. Uh, I know that, um, Mr. President, you will be going on to Berlin tomorrow and then on uh, with your travels, and I very much hope that uh, the rest of your day in London is successful. Uh, I would like to repeat my welcome to you, and maybe you'd like to make a few remarks yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nick Ligg, for this reception. And thank you for what you said, as I support all things you mentioned about finding a solution. This solution is based on two states, Jerusalem as a capital for both and direct negotiations, which we are trying to have now in Jordan. We discussed, as mentioned earlier by Mr. Clegg, a set of issues most notable the negotiations taking place now in Jordan, and for that we salute King Abdullah II for his efforts to host those negotiations. We have some time left. We have two or more meetings till the end of this month. We hope that the Israeli side would propose what is beneficial for the negotiations continuity. I also discussed the Palestinian reconciliation and its prospects and the possibility of its completion because we consider it so important and essential to the Palestinian people. I clearly noted to the importance of Arab Peace Initiative, the initiative that we'll be celebrating in a short time, its 10th anniversary. I hope its content will be understood because it's the most precious initiative to take place since 1948, as it offers a radical solution for the Middle East's conflict. It literally says, if Israel withdrew from the Arab and occupied Palestinian territories, then 50, 57 Arab countries will confess its existence. Thank you, Mr. Clegg, for the British support towards the Palestinian Authority in different aspects. And we wish that you visit uh, Palestine uh, soon when it's convenient. To yesterday at morning, and I think whatever uh, else um, one says uh, about uh, Tony Blair, I think his um, commitment over a long period of time now uh, to the quartet process uh, speaks for itself, and um, uh, he speaks with uh, with real, authentic commitment to the process, realistic about the frustrations and difficulties, but nonetheless. Um, very resilient and steadfast himself in, in, uh, in sticking to it. Um, I'm not going to uh, comment on um, uh, visa arrangements within, within Israel. Uh, all I would say is that I regard President Abbas as uh, the champion of moderate Palestinian opinion. And I've always believed that uh, a final um, negotiated settlement is not possible without strong, moderate Palestinian opinion. Everything should be done to try and strengthen moderate Palestinian opinion, even if, of course, there will be um, issues upon which we disagree, uh, in order to marginalise uh, extremism. The, the worst outcome of all is to weaken the centre and allow uh, the extremes to become increasingly dominant on both sides of the debate. And the United Kingdom government, this coalition government, will always play its role to strengthen and promote the hand of moderation on both sides of this, uh, of this ancient conflict. Concerning uh, Mr. Blair, he has been putting so much effort between us and the Israelis in order to develop a number of demands since he was appointed as the official envoy of the Quartet. His efforts were mostly concentrated on the economical projects and development. Unfortunately, this issue is not related to him, but to the Israeli side, whom did not respond. 
we have 130 countries that confess the Palestinian state's existence. This number may be 150 countries, which means that the Palestinian state is almost a reality. If we ask the Israelis, they would say that there should be a Palestinian state. But the problem now is the settlements activities. The question we ask ourselves is, where will the state be? So we ask them to stop the settlement activity in order to draw the borders and to take the needed procedures concerning the security. After all that, of course, there will be a peace great in the deal Middle East. painstaking work to establish the institutions of a state. And if you look at other reports from the World Bank and others, particularly in the field of economic and institutional reform, huge effort has been made to establish the working institutions and mechanisms of a state. But you don't, you don't create a state by just you know, passing a declaration. The, the Palestinian state will only come into being through a process of negotiation. And that's why, whatever way you look at it, it comes back to the same thing over and over again, which is the necessity of direct negotiations with commitments from both sides along the lines of the outline agreement that everybody knows has to be the basis for the two-state solution. We are doing all the steps needed to establish the independent Palestinian state till the time of announcing it comes. I hope that the Israeli Prime Minister, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, would propose any project, any project, even if you agree or disagree, at least to put something for discussion. But unfortunately, and I frankly say it till this moment, he did not propose any significant project. We were completely united in setting out in very stark diplomatic terms, that's not a contradiction in terms, um, uh, our concerns about um, illegal settlement activity. Why are we increasingly concerned about this? Why are we increasingly outspoken? some point in the future, the two-state solution, which everybody agrees is the only viable way forward for the region. That is why this is of a different, of a different category, if you like, of concern. Because once you place physical facts on the ground which make it impossible to deliver something that everyone has for years agreed is the ultimate destination, then, then uh, you do immense damage. It's almost kind of a, it's an act of deliberate vandalism to the basic premise upon which uh, negotiations have, have taken place for years and years and years, and that is why we've expressed our concerns as a government in increasingly <coughs> forceful terms. <coughs> what uh, Mr. Clegg just said uh, is exactly what I need to hear officially from the British government. I recall when we proposed a project a year and a half ago to the Security Council, Concerning the settlements activity issue, Britain, France, Germany, and Spain supported our position. Then they announced the trilateral statement. We respect and cherish this statement. Concerning Hamas, to be honest, when we say that we want a reconciliation, that does not mean that Hamas will be an original copy of the Palestinian Authority. It will be an opposition like it was in the past and it will adopt its positions. There is many oppositions in the world that disagree with each other. But when we form a Palestinian government, this government and its members should be, should be subjected to the international conditions Yet we cannot ignore the existence of Hamas. It is a part of the Palestinian people. We should deal with it. Israel is our peace partner, and we should deal with it as well. I may say that uh, Mr. Netanyahu will not propose anything. He refuses. He refuses to stop the settlement activity, which is not considered for nor for us nor for the world as a precondition. Where you tend to get sort of robotic uniformity in any a political a party, and you know as well as I do, there are figures on in both the Labour and the Conservative parties who hold positions which are clearly different to their leadership. I expect they'll always continue on an issue which is as emotive and, and, and important as this. Having said that, I mean, I think. Um, uh, 
uh, I've always believed that as outsiders to a conflict which touches us and touches the world as a whole, but nonetheless we are outsiders, we must always seek to use language that is, that is thoughtful, that is free of any prejudice, and that is uh, balanced. And uh, I, uh, everybody in my party knows that uh, I find it intolerable uh, if any Liberal Democrat is, it were to use language that I consider to be uh, prejudiced uh, or, or, or unbalanced. Having said all of that, I think it is nonetheless very important that there should be space in the British political debate for British politicians to make criticisms of our colleagues in the Israeli government without being accused of prejudice and uh, our condemnation, which is one I think, by the way, you'll find on an almost cross-party basis in this country, uh, of illegal settlement activity and the dangers that poses to the long-term viability of a two-state solution is a very good example of that. With that, with that I'd like to thank you all very much.